Optometrist. Hi, my name is Jim Garrity. I'm an ophthalmologist at Mayo Clinic. My area of interest is uh, patients uh, who have orbital problems. Uh, one aspect of this practice is that many patients with orbital problems have thyroid eye disease. Graves' ophthalmopathy is the most common extrathyroidal manifestation of Graves' disease. It's true that most patients with Graves' ophthalmopathy are hyperthyroid, but we'll discuss in a moment the fact that uh, many patients are not hyperthyroid, creating some diagnostic dilemmas. Graves' ophthalmopathy is fairly straightforward to diagnose when all components of the syndrome are present, namely exophthalmus, pretibial dermopathy, and hyperthyroidism. In a study that was done here, a population-based study in Olmsted County, we found that fully 90% of patients with Graves' ophthalmopathy are hyperthyroid. Approximately 6% of patients are euthyroid, 3% have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and 1% were hypothyroid. The diagnosis of Graves' ophthalmopathy is fairly straightforward if the patient has bilateral, symmetric, exophthalmus, and lid retraction. That combined with the history of hyperthyroidism leads to a ready diagnosis. We have diagnostic dilemmas if the patient has never been hyperthyroid or if the eye findings are primarily unilateral. In that instance, uh, further evaluation with blood tests including thyroid functions of uh, total T4, TSH, and thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins are helpful to arrive at the correct diagnosis. Occasionally, we'll also need orbital imaging and uh, an orbit CT scan with no contrast is probably the easiest study to obtain to help confirm the diagnosis in those few patients that present with diagnostic dilemmas. Many of the patients who have Graves' ophthalmopathy will complain of irritation around the eye. They'll be light sensitive, they'll have tearing. Some patients can even have double vision or rarely loss of vision. Approximately 5% of patients who have been hyperthyroid will present with an optic neuropathy. It's true that most patients with Graves' ophthalmopathy don't need any treatment. Approximately two-thirds of patients will go through a phase where they get worse and then they'll spontaneously improve. Approximately 10 percent will get worse and require some form of intervention, either medical or surgical. Another common feature of Graves' ophthalmopathy is the fact that it's misdiagnosed. Many times patients will show up with red, swollen eyes that are initially misinterpreted to be an allergy. So uh, patients will tell us that they were treated uh, for many months with allergy eye drops to no avail. One useful feature that the clinician can look for is lid retraction. And one might think that lid retraction would be fairly obvious, but on occasion, especially if there's redundant skin on the upper eyelids, lid retraction can be missed unless it is specifically looked for. When we see patients with uh, Graves' ophthalmopathy in the uh, examination room, we often elicit a family history of the disease. This disease, uh, as you know, tends to run down the female side of the family and uh, many times there are multiple members of the same family that also have Graves' ophthalmopathy. With an established diagnosis of Graves' ophthalmopathy, uh, endocrinologists um, can or should uh, refer their patients anytime there's a loss of vision. Approximately 5% of patients will have an optic neuropathy. If the patient has double vision, it would also be recommended to refer the patient because uh, mild degrees of double vision can be treated with prism and glasses, and for more advanced degrees of double vision, 
eye muscle surgery might be required. For patients that have excessive opening of their eyelids, eye, eyelid surgery to lower the eyelids uh, will not only improve their appearance, but make them feel much more comfortable.